Okay, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Um, before I uh, get into the main uh, body of my notes, I just wanted to ask, is there anyone in here this evening who is an Arsenal supporter? <laughs> yes, sir. No, 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 it's, it's, it's relevant. Yes. No, you, you don't... Don't be shy. If you're an Arsenal supporter, yeah? Okay, okay. It is relevant. Okay. Yes, <laughs> sir. Okay, right. When I, um, when I put this together, it was um, at the end of a particular footballer's career in football. Uh, and he went into... TV presentation and he went into uh, advertising and the name and he was a fantastic brother you should see him on the pitch it was his football was poetry in motion and then he got replaced by another brother and he took it to another level but the brother I'm speaking of here this evening is brother Ian Wright yes, and wow. I wrote this as a dedication to him about 15 years ago but in saying that, I also wanted to uh, allude to the fact that as a people, as a black people, we waste a lot of food and also at Christmas, which is the month that we're in, the month of fasting, we waste a lot of food and also we eat too much chicken. Okay. <laughs> no. We, no. It's, it's an observation, brother. We eat too much chicken. So, uh, the title of this uh, I've given is called Do You Feel Like Chicken Tonight? Like Chicken Tonight? Chicken Tonight. <laughs> How is everyone? Praise be to Allah. I think somebody just left. They didn't want to. <laughs> okay. Now, in the book, How to Eat to Live, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us what food to prepare, what foods we should eat, uh, what foods we should store in our homes. It is the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that show us how to regain our youthful looks and how to prolong our lives but we can only do this if we choose to adhere to the dietary laws taught to him by Allah who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom all praise is forever due. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad also teaches us that chickens are not fit to eat he said, you have to nurse them so carefully to keep them away from filth. Now, since the bovine spongiform encephalopathy beef scandal or mad cow disease, since the sheep scrapey disease outbreak, since foot and mouth disease, the egg salmonella scare, swine fever and the avian bird flu virus, just to name a few. Today, we are all faced with an ongoing, we're still faced with an ongoing dilemma of frightening proportions, and it is called genetically modified foods. GM foods, artificial foods that have been tested in laboratories for your and my general consumption. Synthetic foods, designed to stimulate your taste buds and satisfy the human appetite. Unnatural foods having no substance and very little nutritional qualities. Replicated substitutes whose genetic integrity has been compromised. Man-made food representing man's attempt to control nature and the world's food supply. Simulated foods designed solely to yield the maximum profits. Frankenstein foods that have been grown and nurtured in the science laboratory. Cloned foods 
developed from test tubes and petri dishes. So, do you feel like chicken tonight? Like chicken tonight? <laughs> like chicken tonight? <laughs> so, despite all the recent food scare scandals, many people have short memories. Many people have lost their appetite for eating and enjoying red meat. But they still love to eat the chicken. Many people do not care if their chicken was reared in a factory farm. They don't care if their chicken was bought from a filthy high street butcher. They do not care if the chicken was purchased from an unclean fast food takeaway outlet. They do not care if their chicken was fed on a diet of fish pellets, nor do they care if their chicken was reared on a diet of excrement. They don't care if their, treat, their chicken was treated with antibiotics and growth hormones. Neither do they care if their chicken was fed on the carcasses of other dead chickens. They don't care about the unhygienic conditions from whence the chicken came. They don't care what their chicken was fed with. They must have their white meat. They must have their breasts. They must have that drumstick and they must have their chicken back. <laughs> so, do you feel like chicken tonight? <laughs> like chicken tonight? Like chicken tonight? <laughs> <laughs> now in the book African Holistic Health a book written by Leila O Africa the author writes that chicken feed contains poisonous arsenic to speed up the rate of growth it also contains antibiotics tranquilizers anti-infective agents aspirin the hormone still bestrol and pesticides. These chemically poisonous drugs get into the chicken's flesh and then the consumer eats it. In the United States of America, the government's agency called the Food and Drug Administration approves the use of these chemicals. The United States government's Department of Agriculture does not detect all of the contamination in these fowls. In fact, they discovered that one out of every five birds sold are unfit for human consumption. And yet, they still pass state's inspection. So if they can do that over there, you can bet your bottom dollar they're doing it over here. Yes, sir. Right under our nose in the UK. So also present in chicken feed is synthetic urea, a chemical that is found in urine. Okay, which is used as a protein substitute because it's cheaper and cheaper than soybeans and also used as meat tenderizers by meat packers so that the tough, stringy flesh of old bulls, cows, pigs, lambs and chickens can be sold to you and me on the high street as high quality meat. They also use synthetic cancerous pesticides that are also found, also fed to animals in order to keep their manure free of flies. These pesticides are internally injected to kill the worms in their stomachs. Also, chemicals like DDT are used and it has been proved by the Texas Research Foundation in 1950 that the meat is contaminated and rendered unsafe to eat due to the pesticides such as DDT and chemicals of a similar molecular structure. There are also cancer causing drugs that are put into the animal feed to increase their mass and their size. The United States Food and Drug Administration approved the use of the hormone still bestrol in 1955. However, it was scientifically proved in uh, to cause cancer in human beings by the International Union Against Cancer in 1956. Antibiotics are also 
fed to chickens. Now, this method of feeding causes bacteria to develop a resistance to drugs in human beings and makes prescribing medicines for infections a questionable therapeutic practice. The Food and Drug Law Institute proved that this was true in 1966. So today, when you obtain a prescription from your doctor, not only are you paying between seven and eight pounds for a per item to process it in the pharmacy, but it has been known that the antibiotics prescribed to you cannot work properly. So what is the point of spending all that hard earned money on these expensive pharmaceuticals when it is highly likely that they could be ineffective anyway? Who's making money out of your illness? Is it the doctor? Is it the clinic? Is it the worldwide multinational pharmaceutical yes, drug company? Or is it the hospital? Is it the National Health Service or the taxpayer? Is it the government or all of them put together? Mm -hmm. Then there are tranquilizers, which are given to animals to increase their rate of growth. These drugs are administered to cows to increase their milk production. These tranquilizers are also increase the hazardous and detrimental effect that the hormone still bestrol and the antibiotics can cause in human beings. Still bestrol is used to cause sterile cows to produce more milk and it is also used to sterilize the bulls. Moreover, the effect of this hormone in human beings has dangerous repercussions. It has been reported that children are physically maturing or developing into adults much too early in their lives. The Food and Drug Administration also approved the use of other cancer-causing substances such as sodium nitrite, sodium nitrate and sodium ascorbate, to name just a few. And even the government's own publications have proved that these substances are very harmful, that they are very hazardous and that they can also be very cancerous. These chemicals are used to give a good red colour to meat and they are also used to hide the spoiled smell and disguise the foul taste of rotting meats. The Boston Children's Cancer Foundation has also scientifically found these chemicals to be cancerous and they can produce abnormal growths. So, when you look at the background to this, when the UK leaves the European Union, it has been reported that when chickens are imported into the, U into the UK from the USA, they will be washed in chlorine and they'll be on your supermarket shelves. So, these synthetic substances continue to be used in the market uh, with government approval and just when you thought it was safe to eat, fish and seafood received the same chemical treatment via the chemicalized ice that they're packed in for shipment. Other chemicals are added at the fisheries or in the seafood farms and in the chemically polluted waters. But the eating of dead corpses of animals is an ethical, a religious, a moral, an ecological, a humanitarian, an economical and an environmental issue. However, the question of should you eat meat or should you not eat meat has to be answered each and every day by every single individual. So, do you feel like chicken tonight? Like chicken tonight? Like chicken tonight. <laughs> How is everyone? That was a lot of stuff to take in, but... <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on in your kitchen tonight, but... <laughs> okay, so the chicken is a caged bird that gets very little or no exercise whatsoever. The chicken is permanently confined to its quarters. 
Even the chicken itself is doing bird. The chicken is incarcerated and kept in complete darkness. The chicken can live out its whole life in a factory farm prison. The chicken is a very sick bird. The chicken is being used as a prisoner of war. The chicken is a modern day slave in a factory farm, which is a modern day representation of a hold of a slave ship. The chicken is a scavenger. The chicken is forced to eat its own excrement. And today, the average chicken is just as bad for you to eat as the pig, but the masses of the people don't seem to care. They must have that white meat. They must have those breasts. They must have their drumstick and they must have their chicken back. Now, do you ever remember being told that you are what you eat? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At school, if someone ever called you a chicken, yes, sir. what did that mean? <laughs> it meant you were too scared to defend yourself. They believed that you were an easy pushover. You became the butt of other people's jokes. They believed that you didn't have the guts or even the gizzards to, to face a serious challenge. <laughs> Maybe they seemed to offer, you seemed to offer them no resistance whatsoever. They believed that you allowed other people to walk all over you, that you lacked courage, just like the chicken. <laughs> In truth, you are what you eat. Maybe you have inherited some of the attributes and characteristics of the chicken. In the Bible, in the book of Revelation, chapter, 16, chapter 18, verse 2, we read, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has, is become a habitation of devils and a hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Is that you? <laughs> Are you that foul spirit? <laughs> Are you that unclean and hateful bird? It's a foul reputation to live with. <laughs> it's a foul business and it's definitely foul play. <laughs> At school dinners, did you ever notice that the catering staff hardly ever washed the chicken before they cooked it? Did you ever take a bite out of a cooked chicken and taste the hair and the feathers on its skin? Did you ever take a bite out of a half-cooked chicken that looked ready to eat on the outside but only turned out to be raw chicken flesh? Oh, blood and bone on the inside. <laughs> Was it medium rare? Have you ever noticed that some people never use seasoning on their chicken before they cook it? Some people. Did you notice that that chicken in your sandwich that you purchased just the other day from the sandwich bar? is only made up of 15% pure chicken meat. The remaining 85% is a mixture of offal, bone, fat, protein, salts, gelling agents, and many other unknown and indescribable ingredients. Have you noticed the state of your high street lately? Most shops selling you food also want you to purchase the chicken from them. Once upon a time, it was the butcher who sold chicken exclusively. But later, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Marks and Spencer's all came in on the act. But today, if not only every one of these stores wants to sell you chicken, but virtually every high street on earth consists of these butcher shops, these supermarkets, these delicatessen, these restaurants, 
and also these fast food chicken takeaway outlets. They all seem to want to sell you more and more and more and more chicken. So selling chicken is big business indeed. So we have the Tandoori Chicken Restaurant and the Chinese Chicken Takeaway. There is Kentucky Fried Chicken and there's Tennessee Fried Chicken. There is Cottage Fried Chicken. There is Mississippi Fried Chicken. There is Favorite Fried Chicken. There is Southern Fried Chicken. There's Nando's Fried Chicken. There is Dixie Fried Chicken. There's Pixie Fried Chicken. There is Halal Fried Chicken. There is Muslim Fried Chicken. Why do they all want to sell you all of this chicken? Why do they want you to eat up all of this chicken? Have you seen the state of some of these high street restaurants lately? What about the conditions and the cleanliness of some of these fast food chicken takeaway outlets? Have you seen how shabby some of them look? How safe is the local deli? What is really going on in many of these so-called fresh food retail outlets on your high street? What goes on behind that closed door? What is the chicken really subjected to? What kind of surgical operation is going on away from the public gaze and out of the public's mind? Well, let's see. They chill the chicken. They flame grill the chicken. They drill the chicken. They kill the chicken. They turn the chicken. They burn the chicken. They drop the chicken. They chop the chicken. They soak the chicken. They poke the chicken. They choke the chicken. They smoke the chicken. They mug the chicken. They drug the chicken. They cut the chicken. They gut the chicken. They mangle the chicken. They strangle the chicken. They dangle the chicken. They manhandle the chicken. <laughs> they halve the chicken. They carve the chicken. They quarter the chicken. They slaughter the chicken. They whack the chicken. They hack the chicken. They smack the chicken. They crack the chicken. They run the chicken. They stun the chicken. They jerk the chicken. They work the chicken. They stuff up the chicken. They rough up the chicken. They heat up the chicken. They beat up the chicken. <laughs> they trick the chicken. They kick the chicken. They force to feed the chicken. They bleed the chicken. They jackboot the chicken. They electrocute the chicken. They persecute the chicken. They execute the chicken. They ground the chicken. They pound the chicken. They scorch the chicken. They torch the chicken. They rotate the chicken. They violate the chicken. <laughs> Excuse me. They assassinate the chicken. <laughs> they eliminate the chicken. They stake the chicken. They break the chicken. They brown the chicken. They drown the chicken. They interrogate the chicken. They intoxicate the chicken. They coronate the chicken. They marinate the chicken. They use the chicken. They abuse the chicken. They rub the chicken. They club the chicken. They hate the chicken. They eradicate the chicken. They exterminate the chicken. They annihilate the chicken. They platter the chicken. They batter the chicken. They skin the chicken. They dust bin the chicken. They trash the chicken. They bash the chicken. They mash the chicken. They smash the chicken. They dehydrate the chicken. They decapitate the chicken. They stab the chicken. They kebab the chicken. <laughs> they shallow fry the chicken. They deep fry the chicken. <laughs> they stir fry the chicken. They liquefy the chicken. They juke the chicken. They coat and cook the chicken. They <laughs> They maim the chicken, they chow mein the chicken. They foil the chicken, they spoil the chicken. They oil the chicken, they boil the chicken. They mush the chicken, they crush the chicken. 
They shock the chicken, they stock the chicken. They dice the chicken, they spice the chicken. They slice the chicken, they sacrifice the chicken. <laughs> All praises be to Allah. <laughs> they roast the chicken, they toast the chicken. They cream the chicken, they steam the chicken. They baste the chicken, they paste the chicken. They taste the chicken, they waste the chicken. They fillet the chicken, they skillet the chicken. They dupe the chicken, they soup the chicken. They vindaloo the chicken, they tindaloo the chicken. They stew the chicken, they barbecue the chicken. They shred the chicken, they bread the chicken. They freeze the chicken, they squeeze the chicken. They casserole the chicken, they Swiss roll the chicken. They charcoal the chicken, they bacon roll the chicken. They stock cube the chicken, they tube the chicken. They hurry the chicken, they curry the chicken. They trap the chicken, they zap the chicken. They unwrap the chicken, they slap the chicken. They warm the chicken, they cool the chicken. They dope the chicken, they escalope the chicken. They tease the chicken, they cheese the chicken. They puree the chicken, they pate the chicken. They pizza the chicken, they eat to the chicken. They rinse the chicken, they mince the chicken. They bone the chicken, and now they clone the chicken. Poor, poor, poor chicken. <laughs> Do you feel like chicken tonight? Like chicken tonight? Like chicken tonight? <laughs> In the Holy Quran, which is the scripture of the Muslims, we pray to Allah every day to be guided on the straight path. However, further on in the Quran, in Surah 7, Verse 16, we read that Satan tells Allah God, I will certainly wait for them in thy straight path. What here is the straight path? The straight path represents human emotions, human desires and human appetites. For the man and the woman who is untrained in the discipline of fasting, the desire to eat, especially when times are lean, cannot and should not be underestimated. The urge and desire to eat food, especially when it's scarce, is very difficult for many people to control. So, do you still feel like chicken tonight? When I was growing up, my mother taught me regularly to eat. When, that, when I'm eating a meal, it is important to sit down and eat at the dinner table. As a child, my mother trained me to eat my food with a knife, a fork, and a spoon. But today, many, many people are seen, especially people who should know better, are seen walking up and down the high street with balancing their shopping and busy eating a three-course KFC dinner. Or they're consuming fish and chips. Someone some of them are using their unwashed hands as they delve into their bargain bucket. And can you imagine now, they've got the black man eating dinner out of a bucket. Think on that. So, our brothers and sisters can be seen indulging themselves within their fast food cuisine, either disguised as fish, in batter, with chips, or poultry coated in 11 different herbs and spices. They can sometimes be seen consuming a tired old hamburger dressed up in lettuce, wrapped up in a sesame seed bun, and they're loving it. Some people have been seen devouring this so-called cuisine while they're traveling on the bus, the underground, on British rail, to the discomfort of other passengers. They have been seen going into nightclubs or in cinemas with a takeaway meal, eating it out of a cardboard box as they reach for their money and their hands are covered in grease. 
They can't do without that midnight snack. Did anybody see the movie starring Eddie, Eddie Griffin called Undercover Brother? Yes, sir. The enemy weaponized the chicken because it was called General Fried Chicken because it was the General's Fried Chicken. They put something in those 11 herbs and spices and that they used to coat the chicken with. Today, a lot of people have become lazy or they simply have no time whatsoever to cook a hot square meal in the home or they are simply unable to prepare regular cooked meals due to their hectic schedules, their working shift patterns and their fast lifestyles. However, KFC, McDonald's, Burger King have come to the rescue. They have become the number one meal providers in many people's homes and many people's lives. But medical evidence exists showing that there is a direct link to fast food and the <coughs> increase in cases of cancer and obesity. But meat, as KRS One said, once said, is the number one drug on the street. And it was reported in the news that the fast food that parents are constantly feeding to their children can seriously shorten their life expectancy. Yet, the eating of the dead corpses of animals is still an ethical, a religious, a moral, an ecological, a humanitarian, an ecolog eco economical and an environmental issue. However, I ask the question again, should you eat meat or should you not eat meat? And that question can only be answered by each and every single individual. So brothers and sisters, in the book, How to Eat to Live, the Honourable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the chicken is not good for us to eat. As you know, and I quote, as you know, the chicken is as filthy as the swine and the dog. He is, very, he is a very filthy fowl. If you want to keep him, if you want to eat him, do not let him get away from you or stray away from the coo. Keep him closed up and feed him what you want him to eat. Never let him out to eat bugs and worms. Feed him the things you know are good and pure. When he is fat, you can kill and eat him. This does not mean that he is good for us. You have to study up on the ways to protect his eating for he will turn right around and eat his own droppings. Do you know someone who is ready to take that deadly bite? What about you? How do you know if the chicken that is lying on your dinner plate was originally meant for you? Maybe it should have been condemned and processed for pet food instead. How do you know if the chicken you purchased the other day has the correct sell-by date? How do you know? How do you know? When will your chickens finally come home to roost? <laughs> Have you ever been cursed by the chicken? Have you ever had food poisoning by the chicken, only to come back and eat more of the same on the following day? Is it really a coincidence that the film Chicken Run was released in the cinema? Even the chickens in that film, who were held in captivity on a factory farm, were forced to come up with an elaborate escape plan they were all prepared to pay a high price to win their freedom. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is a sign. This is telling us that today, even the chicken should not have to tolerate extremely poor standards of living. And what about you? Well, on television, do you remember there was um, an advertisement 
where there was a Caucasian woman uh, who she had a West Midlands accent. She was wearing headphones and singing badly, but she was singing Babylon Leave Rasta Man Alone, and it was to an oven ready chicken. Now, what was the significance of the reggae sound being used in the background? In that commercial? Who or what does the oven ready chicken represent? Could it be you, black man? <laughs> what about our brother who plays football? He used to play football for Crystal Palace, Arsenal, West Ham, and England. He, and when he left football, he enjoyed a career in advertising and presenting television programs. And he still enjoys commentating the game of two halves. Now, was it really a coincidence that our brother, Ian Wright, was used with maximum effect by the advertising industry to promote the chicken? I don't think so. In spite of all of the health warnings, in spite of all of the food scare scandals, in spite of all of the hygiene scandals, as well as all of the known poisonous chemicals and substances used in the animal feed that is uh, in the livestock that ends up on your plate every day, there is very little in this world that would separate the black man from his chicken. The black man has a love affair with the chicken. The black man will not let go of the chicken. <laughs> he must have it all and then some. He must have his white meat. He must have his breasts. <laughs> he must have his wings. He must have his drumsticks. And he must have his chicken back. <laughs> the black man loves his chicken to the max. You could even say he loves his chicken to the bone. <laughs> Our brother Ian Wright has made millions of pounds in advertising revenue promoting chicken tikka masala sauce. Ian Wright has used his name, his fame, his status and his powerful influence to reaffirm the black man's relationship with the chicken. <laughs> but does Ian Wright know what the chicken was fed with before it got to you? I'm sure that if he were present today to hear this message, he might reflect on the overwhelming impact that he has made on the lives of millions of people who have, re who have watched his commercials and noticed the increase in sales of chicken in the high street. In my conclusion, brothers and sisters, if he can hear me, this is all I have to say to you. Ian Wright, Ian Wright, Ian Wright, 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 do you feel like chicken tonight? Like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Thank you for listening. As I leave you in the greeting words of peace, assalamu alaikum. <laughs>